what's going on YouTube, this is CJ. Let's go ahead and jump right into this update. Now if you can't tell already, my hands are definitely busy in the tank. You know, rearranging some corals, had a few new additions, had some cool warfare breakout, of course, you know, it's to be expected with the reef tank, so I'd adjust accordingly. But besides this, this update, we're gonna cover a few things. First one being uh, the relationship between phosphates and nitrates in your aquarium. And we're also gonna talk a little bit about a brand new alkalinity HANA checker I picked up and my thoughts as far as, you know, how accurate it is and my plans for, you know, dosing in the future based off these results. So let's go ahead and get to it. So let's take a quick look at my filtration. Now, if you guys recall my last update, I mentioned needing to replace my carbon. So what better time to, you know, improve my system? Had this reactor setting empty for a few months, decided to go ahead and fill it with carbon instead of running it in a mesh bag in my sump. You know, my thought is, hey, it'll be a more efficient, more effective way forcing water through the media instead of it running over the media and potentially you're not going all the way through it. So everyone knows a reactor is better than a mesh bag in this situation. So why not go with it with an empty reactor setting unused, right? So pretty easy. So let's take a quick look at the algae scrubber. You know, it's been roughly, I would say two weeks since my last update. That's the last time I've looked at this box. You know, I haven't cleaned it, I haven't touched it. That's the point of documenting. You know, if I don't record these videos and compare videos, it's hard for me to keep track of these things. Now, if there's someone out there maybe looking at this saying, hey, it's not growing a ton of algae, there is more than last time, but it's still not a bunch. But that's okay with me because what I'm keeping more track of is my parameters, my phosphates, my nitrates, and just how effective this thing is at, you know, helping to maintain those things. Is it doing it on its own? Of course not. You know, my skimmers are assisting with that. Water changes are assisting with that. But overall, I'm pretty happy with... Uh, where my tank is right now with this algae scrubber and my current filtration setup. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. So over the last couple of months, especially since I got my hands on that ultra low phosphorus HANA checker, I've really been able to keep an eye on my system's parameters, especially the phosphates. I gotta admit, I was getting a little concerned, you know, the first test was great. It was at 0 0.024, well below 0 0.03 where you want your reef tank. But I slowly watched it creep all the way up to 0 0.042 so definitely uh, not the direction I wanted to go so it brought me to you know question could this algae scrubber really take care of my tank so with that being said you know shout out to YouTube and sometimes you get great comments that give you some great food for thought and someone mentioned to me the red field ratio also something known as uh, the relationship between phosphates nitrates and carbon in your system specifically with you know the bacteria in your tank and life in your tank but it also helps translate to the water in your tank meaning you can't have too much without the other or not enough of one without the other being affected so how does this apply to my reef tank well in Lima's terms guys my water was too clean you know I was changing 40 to 60 percent of my water every week I mean that's three five gallon water changes weekly guys now that's great for you know keeping parameters in check as far as alkalinity calcium and different things but it hurts me when it comes to the balancing act of nitrates versus phosphates my nitrates are pretty much undetectable at zero hurting those bacteria algae that need a little nitrates to grow so ultimately the fix was less water changes you know drop them down to one a week and ultimately watch my phosphates drop from 0 0.042 back down to 0 0.033 and it looks like they're holding steady right there. So definitely great food for thought I was given. And I'm glad I got that comment. So I had to share that with you guys and hopefully it helps someone. So over the last few months, you know, it's been all about better test kits, better water quality, and ultimately, you know, a better understanding of my tank's usage so I can, you know, dose the appropriate amounts and keep everything on the right track. So with that being said, finally got my hands on a HANA alkalinity checker. Just as you guys have suggested to me, one of the best purchases I've ever made. Now I'm not gonna give a full tutorial on how to actually use this HANA checker because honestly, there's tons of great videos out there that share that, but I will give you my personal thoughts on it. You know, I've, I'm directly comparing this to the API test kit, the Salifer Alkalinity Check, and then this HANA checker. Now, if I was to rate them, API is on the bottom, of course. Salifer and then HANA are pretty close as when it comes to accuracy. The only problem is, when it comes to the Salifer test kit, it's judging the color change. Because alkalinity is so sensitive to where I ended up with a 10.2 according to my Salifer kit. And really, 
at a 9.6 alkalinity when I used my Hannah checker. And it was because of the color change. You just don't know when to stop dropping or if this drop is enough color change or if the next drop is. So when it comes to simplicity and accurate numbers, Hannah checker wins hands down. You know, it seems like the further I go on this hobby, the more I realize I really don't know anything yet. <laughs> and I say that, you know, lightheartedly because there are so many levels to this hobby. You know, once you get past aquascaping and, you know, filtration and coral placement, you start diving into parameters and dosing. Then you get into, you know, the next level of supplements, you know, iodine and different levels that your corals need to actually grow. I mean, there's so many levels to this hobby. So I'm going to focus on what I've learned today and what I've learned over these last couple of weeks. Ultimately, the new plan, you know, I always have a master plan, right? <laughs> um, less water changes, guys. First and foremost, that's going to be the new plan right off the bat because nitrates are definitely not an issue with me maintaining anymore in my system. My biological filtration is doing fantastic. The way I have my tank set up is tuned right in to be able to handle the stock list I have, which is only six fish. So with that being said, one water change a week is going to help keep my nitrates, phosphates leveled out the right way. But that's only one part of the problem. Next side of the coin is going to be dealing with alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. So let's talk a little bit about that. Now, I do want to share one mistake I made over the last couple of weeks. As you guys know, I reduced my water changes from three to one per week. And each time I do a water change, that bucket of fresh salt water introduces an alkalinity of close to 11 from reef crystals, calcium close to 490, ultimately helps replace what my tank is, you know, consuming. When I stop those water changes, that midweek, that end of the week water change, my alkalinity consumption really start becoming evident. It dropped from almost nine DKH all the way down to 5.4. Didn't realize it until I got that HANA checker. That's the importance of a better test kit, right? So with that being said, Got to increase my dosing a little bit more and also account for, you know, the calcium not being introduced as much during the week and my magnesium. So with all that being said, my numbers are pretty good right now. I mean, they're damn near close to natural seawater at this point. Calcium setting at 430, my magnesium setting at 1340, and my alkalinity setting at 8.2. Just check these last night. Now, is it the same today? Probably not because my tank's consuming more and it's easier to track what it's consuming without water changes throwing it off, if that makes sense. So, you know, the tank's been up and down, you know, a lot of huge swings, but ultimately I haven't lost any corals and I haven't crashed and killed anything yet. So I'm happy about that. But what's going to be my long term solution? You know, what's my ultimate plan? Well, I got to encompass everything in this plan. I got to encompass my nitrates my phosphates, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium. I got to compass the big five. You know, some people say the big three, but it's the big five in my tank that I got to keep mind of. So one water change a week is going to be what maintains my parameters as far as nitrates and phosphates. And when it comes to the big three, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, I'm going to go ahead and get back on the white stuff, guys. I know some of you guys may be wondering, what's the white stuff, CJ? <laughs> Talking about calcwasser. Still got three-fourths of a bottle left over of the CCAM calc wash that I used earlier in my tank's life. So I'm gonna go back to it. You know, this ultimately I'm gonna have to keep track of the calcium because the less water changes I do, the less I introduce calcium and the more it's gonna drop. So that's gonna be the easiest way, calc wash and my auto top off. So I'll keep you guys updated on, you know, how that goes. So a new plan, you know, more knowledge as I go and I'm updating you guys and hopefully you guys are growing with me. Now, as far as the tank goes, livestock still doing well. Haven't lost any fish. Still have the flame angel, flame hawkfish, maroon clown, six line ras, yellow ras, and my chromis. So those guys are still there. Still have my coral bandit strip. He's still doing fantastic. Now, when it comes to new additions, I made a trip to the LFS, and unfortunately, he sold the marine beta and the Satosa core I wanted. So, but that comes with the territory. You snooze, you lose. But I did leave with a little pieces of candy. I picked up an orange digitata coral, a larger piece to help kind of, you know, blend in and just try a little bit more SPS in my tank on the left side. Also picked up a yellow-eyed candy cane coral. And then the largest piece I picked up 
It's gonna be a mid-sized colony of frogs spawn on the right. Now, my ultimate goal is to have that kind of fill in that whole area. It's similar to the frogs when I have on the top right of the tank, and I want it to kind of be a seamless frog spawn element on the right. So will it work out? Who knows? But I will say uh, it's still getting adjusted to the tank, so it's definitely not fully open yet. So future livestock plans for the reef? I don't know yet, guys. I still would like to add a few choice selections when it comes to livestock. It only fit maybe two or three more fish without it hurting my bio load too much. So I'm trying to be real selective. And then that pillar on the top right, I'm still trying to find a nice piece of Satosa or something bright red that I can put on that section that is a mid, you know, the highlight coral that, you know, can survive in that space. So ultimately, when I find that piece, I'll put something there, but I'm done with, you know, just adding random pieces only to remove them later at this point. So I think it's gonna be a good stopping point for this update, guys. You know, just kind of sharing my steps in the journey as I go. The more knowledge I gain and the more, you know, mistakes and experiments I'm going through, just keeping them documented and, you know, keeping you guys updated. So I think we're gonna leave it here. So as always, hey, you guys definitely like, comment, subscribe. You guys do what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing.